There's a new jungle route, taking over Challenger, where you start at your red buff, hit level 3, then just straight up tower dive the enemy bot lane. Some challengers don't even wait for level 3. They do their red, then run straight at the enemy bot lane for the turret dive. And if you're pushed up instead, well, that just makes their lives even easier as they can gank you without having to deal with the tower. And before you top laners laugh at bot lane's demise, it's actually happening on both sides of the map. Think it's only red buff starts? Think again. Junglers starting blue won't even guarantee your safety as challenger junglers are seemingly going out of their way to force these level 3 ganks on side lanes. How about you don't push and stay healthy enough to prevent the dive? Well, now they're just invading your jungler, giving your laner first blood. In this video, we'll be breaking down exactly how this new route works, explaining why it's so popular in Season 14, and what challenger junglers are doing to counter it. Before we get into it though, if you want to get the rank you've always wanted in Season 14, then head on over to skillcap.com. We just did a massive update, adding a ton of brand new courses for the new season. Take our course on ganking in Season 14. We not only teach you all the fun fundamentals, but also every new gank angle with the terrain changes. Or take our course on jungle clearing. We teach you all the tips and tricks in the new season that can cut down your clear time by up to 30 seconds. The best part, you can try all this out completely risk free. If you don't rank up while actively using skill capped, you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to get the rank you've always wanted in season 14. Alright, now on to the new route. So the most typical way people are doing this is actually starting at their raptors. This way, their bot lane doesn't have to give them a leash, which actually helps their bot get the push advantage to set up the dive. At the same time, they get a faster path as they can do raptors, into red, into krugs, straight into that dive bot lane. Now for the first reasons this is happening in season 14, well it's the terrain changes in bot. Before diving bot lane like this was much slower and more difficult, you would have to go around a long detour and only have this one brush to gank from. Now with this new tri brush they added, it makes it for easy ganks if the wave hasn't fully yet crashed. You can actually see how hard it is for the enemy bot to even know Zinzao is here, as he cannot only use the brush at first, but then use the wall after to hide behind in Fog of War. And if that doesn't work, well, you have this new brush to use to get fully behind the enemy to dive on a crash. At the same time, you can now use a sweeper to check all three brushes for vision. This also makes an invade much easier if the tower dive isn't there, since you know they haven't spotted you and can wait in this specific brush overlooking the enemy's blue. And since you have lane priority and bot from them pushing, your teammates can actually help you while the enemy bot is pinned by the wave. And if all of that wasn't enough, they actually changed the terrain where there's now a nice new invade angle onto blue from the mid side of the map. This makes it so you can do something like red first and again, not getting a leash to help guarantee your bot lane gets that push lead in lane prio, then krugs, into raptors, then if you have lane priority in both mid and bot, you can now choose to invade. Exact same concept here, wait for the enemy to start their blue. In this case, Xin Zhao actually knows this invade is coming, but it still doesn't matter as Kindred had lane party in both nearby lanes, so their laners collapse with the numbers advantage and it's an easy first blood into stealing the blue. You can see how you can even start red, and again, purposely not getting a leash so your bot has the push, hit level 2, then literally dodge any potential ward's bot side by going through this new path to dive bot lane instead. And again, with that concept of lane priority, on top of having a number advantage with the kill, it means if the enemy jungler continues to path to you, despite being a level up, they still can't fight against your invade. The funny thing is you can actually ask for a leash on purpose with the intention of not only getting a faster clear, but then guaranteeing the enemy bot lane will be the one pushing early. This way, you can just gank them once you hit level 3 for that free first blood. So why are junglers able to get away with this in Season 14? Well, to understand this, first let's go over what it looks like when two junglers start opposite sides. Let's say a blue team Zin Zhao starts at his red, and a red team Kha'Zix starts at his red. They're starting opposite sides, and so here's the problem for the Kha'Zix. If he does red, Krugs into Raptors, by the time he crosses over and gets to his wolves, it's only then he will see the level 3 gank hit bot side. And so now he knows an invade is likely coming and he'll have to fall behind wasting a ton of time running to the enemy's blue to try and make up for his own blue being stolen. At the same time, if both junglers clear for level 3, Xin Zhao will always be able to dive the side lane before Kha'Zix can get there to defend due to Xin Zhao starting closer to it. Now, let's say Kha'Zix is able to spot this in advance, either through a ward or maybe the Xin Zhao just decides to gank straight at level 2. Well, again, as we saw, if he passes normal, he's going to get invaded on his blue. So he'll have to react by invading the enemy's topside jungle. The problem is, this doesn't get him ahead, as now Xin Zhao not only got the free gank bot side, but gets to steal his entire bot side jungle as well. Now, if in the event somehow that tower dive or gank bot goes wrong, and the enemy jungler can defend and invade on his blue, well, the jungler simply recalls, and since the enemy is pathing as normal to their blue side, well, all of your blue side camps will still be alive. For this reason, it wasn't uncommon for challenger junglers to start opposite sides, and then actually both execute the 
exact same tactic on each other. They go no leash, getting lane priority or ganking that lane to get priority, and then invading. The other jungler does the same on the other side of the map because they both know whoever doesn't do this will be at a disadvantage. This is actually called vertical jungling since now the map is split in half, well, vertically, and one jungler gets complete control of top side while the other gets complete control of bot side. Now, what about when junglers start on the same side? For example, let's say a blue team Talia starts red while a red team Belveth starts at her blue. Well, if Talia still goes for this route, taking Raptors, Red, and Krugs, and then ganking the enemy bot lane, keep in mind, Belveth will have already cleared her blue side camps, so an invade is impossible. This means she's forced to recall and head top side where Belveth will be ahead in tempo and hitting level four first. You can see how this makes it near impossible to fight over the scuttle there, and in fact, can all but guarantee you're pretty much getting double scuttled. However, there's still a nice benefit. You get to now reverse your clear back into bot lane to regank the lane you likely got summoner spells from earlier, making it very easy to pick up another kill. Same idea in this example. The red team Graves will start blue, while the enemy jungler starts red. So Graves does blue, Gromp, Wolves, and decides to gank bot. Again, no invade is possible off this since the bot side camps were already cleared by the enemy, so he has to recall and head topside. In this case, the enemy jungler didn't AFK farm like the Belveth, instead they reacted by stealing their Raptors, but that obviously costs them in time, so Graves can now go red, Krugs into rushing the bot side scuttle to prevent being double scuttled since they won't get there in time anymore, and hitting level 4. Now, do keep in mind, there is a bit of nuance to this route that you need to be aware of. First, it goes without saying, either being a strong early game jungler, or simply having the better early game matchup against the enemy jungler can make things easier. Just as important though, is recognizing your side lane matchup. For example, here we have a Nidalee jungle, doesn't offer any crowd control when ganking, and her top lane matchup is a Trindamere top, another champion with very little crowd control. This is why going straight into an invade makes a lot more sense as a gank on that sideline would just simply never work. Also, notice how since Nidalee knew this was the case from the start, they actually just sat on a trinket ward, allowing them to get vision on the enemy blue and making this subsequent invade way easier. Now, compare it to this game, where it's Xin Zhao, who can have great ganks as early as level 2, and the top lane matchup is Jax versus Gwen. Our Jax provides crowd control with his E, while Gwen takes ignite teleport so lacks any kind of escape early. This is why it makes much more sense to rush that level 2 gank top, then invade after, and in this case, actually following it up with a second gank right afterwards. Another thing that's important to understand is how to follow this up in Snowball. Here you can see a Xin Zhao starting red. His side lane is not ideal for ganking early as Mordekaiser offers little crowd control. However, we can predictably say he will get the push advantage. Then as he finishes Raptors, take a look mid, he actually has lane priority there. So both lanes have lane priority, all systems go on the invade. Nice little trick here, using the blast cone to check wolves first and then being able to surprise the enemy at his blue from behind. And sure enough, after a few seconds, the first blood is then secured. Now Xin Zhao got too low, so he has to recall. This makes sense but as he's leaving base, consider what Hecarim's next move will be. By hitting tab and checking Hecarim CS, he had 20. Each camp is worth 4 CS, so we know Hecarim has done his red, Krugs, Raptors, Wolves, and blue. This means as Xin Zhao is leaving spawn, Hecarim's only camp alive is his Gromp, so it's very likely that Hecarim will head to his Gromp when he spawns into possibly checking the top scuttle. With Xin Zhao having first blood and the item advantage, he can look to rush topside scuttle this way, he can not only take that scuttle into then double scuttling with bot, and potentially invading the Hecarim's bot side as it spawns. Sure enough though, he ends up catching Hecarim topside after he took his Gromp and went to check scuttle, scoring a double kill with his item advantage, and you can start to get an idea of how much you can really snowball off that initial invade. Now, I don't want to give you guys the wrong impression though. It's not that challenger junglers are using this route every single game. For example, here Xin Zhao starts as his red, then Krugs, then moves to his raptors. If we look at his top matchup, it both lacks lane priority and it's ungankable. Aatrox doesn't have a good enough early game to straight fight Jax, and he doesn't have good enough gank setup to combat Jax having both crowd control with his E and his Q leap to escape. This is why it makes perfect sense to just path as normal instead. Also, it's worth noting, once you finish your raptors, you'll always have this nice pivot to a gank on mid, into then this very strong gank path from mid that puts you right behind the enemy bot lane. Also, if all these variations weren't enough, if you start Raptors and go for a clear towards top side, but then have to bail out on it because your gang slash invade plan just isn't working out, you can actually just recall. You want to do this if you take Futures Market in your rune page. This way you can then purchase a Dorn's Blade for a massive early spike at the other scuttle. All right, so why has this route suddenly become so popular in season 14? Well, the terrain changes are definitely a big contributor, both making the ganks on bot and invade stronger. However, there's also kind of a hidden change that went under the radar. On the first patch of season 14, they reduced 
the damage jugglers do to all camps. However, at the same time, they actually significantly buff the pet damage in the early levels. This had the side effect of making single target camps like red buff a bit slower to take, but doing a camp like raptors is actually faster since your pet gets more value when being able to damage multiple monsters at once. This has definitely contributed to the amount of players choosing to start raptors now, which then helps make this route a bit more viable. But I'm curious, what do you guys think is actually causing the rise of this route? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments section below. And remember, if you want to get the rank you've always wanted in season 14, then go to skillcap.com. We have brand new courses that are updated for the season 14 rank climb. Still skeptical? Don't worry, you can try us out completely risk-free. If you don't rank up while actively using skillcapped, you'll get your money back, no questions asked. You can unlock this game-changing opportunity right now through the link below. So what are you waiting for? Click the link to get the rank you've always wanted in season 14. All right, and that will wrap things up. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.